The very first ride I completed in this MMM layout was Bouncy Castle. I never made a full presentation video for this module on this channel and that's going to change now. So in this video I'm going to show you all of the details of this module and also how I have improved it during some iterations because it is quite different from what it was when I initially built it. So this is how it works. You turn it on here, it goes into calibration, thinking now there's no minifig in front, so it knows what the light value is for that. Put a minifig in front, tell it now there's a minifig and it's calibrated and it is running. So when you're putting a minifig in front of the sensor, it registers it, you can do so up to three times. And once people are inside, they bounce four times. And afterwards, they get out again, and that is it. Press the start button again to turn off the module. Mechanically, it's super simple from the outside. But what is actually going on inside? Well, let's take a look. First of all, we have this one motor that makes sure that we can both go in and out. You can see here that it uses this old clicker mechanism that I'm now slowly moving away from, where you can see when we're turning one way, one of the clicker goes up and going the other way, the other clicker goes up. That makes sure that this track here is always moving in this direction, while this little track here can go in both directions. I also have a motor here in the middle of the mat, and that one is moving the tracks on the mat. So it is actually there in the middle, also being moved up and down together with the people. That's why this module is a bit heavy in the middle and why it doesn't move that quickly. Over here you can see the motor I'm using to actually bounce with. And it's an NXT motor. It's the only NXT motor in this module and it bounces by turning right here. As you can see, the towers here are moving to the sides together with the mat. And if we look inside here, take off this panel here, then you can see that it is simply having an arm here that pulls the side of the castle and it's the same on the other side. What's really interesting here in the middle is that we have a lot of gears here. So we have a common axle going through the module and then gears going into the middle in order to move the mat up and down using some lift arm mechanisms. So if I move this panel here from the other side, you can see more clearly that I have these gears here that actually make the castle move up and down or bounce as it does. The uh, adapter you see here is for the uh, light sensor so that it is more hidden than in the other modules that I have. I would really like to use the new kind of clicker mechanism but as you can see there's not much space underneath. That also means that if I use the new clicker mechanism that I'm using in the other rides that I have, then the whole castle would have to be moved all the way here to the side instead of being somewhat centered. And I don't really like that. Looking at it from the back, you can see that this plot here is missing. And that is because we now have a gadget slot here, 7 by 16. That means that we can easily extend the module to be a full size on the plate and also reduce it. And in the reduced size, I was able to build the layout you saw in the beginning of this video with the very big, big wheel module. The cover here is easily removed to the NXT so that we can gain good access to it. The placement of the NXT makes it easy to reprogram the uh, whole module because we can just put in the cable right here like this. And you can easily charge the module by just putting the charger in like this. And that is even though that this cover is on and the cover is on here as well. I have also reduced the height of the module so you can see that it, it is now plain with the modules that will be around it. Before it was one plate taller and that was a year problem. And I've also now using a lot of these curved slopes in order to still have the same height of the castle because of the mechanism below really makes this the lowest height that it can be at. As for the castle itself, I tried to build it as rounded and soft as possible so that it really looks like the bouncy castle in the video game being packed. The colors are also as close as I could get with the bright light orange and red. And in the front you can see we have a special version of this ticket booth that I'm also still trying to get right. So every time I'm building a new ride, I typically also make a new version of that. The most important change I've made to this module, however, is 
this right here. I have made some space in front of the little track so that it no longer locks up on the minifix as they're being pushed out of the module. And that has been done by digging into the front. But this also really works well because now I'm no longer ruining this track that we have here, which you could see in the previous videos that was causing a lot of trouble. And people also having uh, no issues actually going past even when people are coming from the inside of the module and are pushing out. So that is a huge improvement. Definitely something I'm considering getting into the other modules as well, as I'm still trying to perfect how the tracks in front of these rides actually make sure that people can get in and out safely. And that is it for this video. I'm still waiting for parts for all the big wheel and I also still have to improve it because it is not quite reliable yet. But then once I've got these parts and have improved it, then I'm going to make a full presentation video of that. I still have to find out what I'm going to show next Wednesday because I'm not sure I'll get the parts for this module before then. But until then, take care, have fun, and I will see you in the next video.